Hello everybody, it's that time of month again where I open all of my November subscription boxes. So I have six to show to you guys today. One of them is not technically a subscription box, but it is a special edition that I ordered from a subscription box company. And we do have a quarterly box in here as well that is about to become bi-monthly. So you will be seeing that one a little bit more frequently. So just to quickly run through what we've got here before I start tearing them all open, we have the adult fairy loot, which I have been spoiled for numerous times because I've had this a while. It arrived pretty early in the month. We also have the, regular monthly young adult fairy loot which was sent to me by the team over at fairy loot to show to you guys so thank you very much for that in your fairy loot you can expect to find a brand new hardback release in an exclusive edition along with a selection of bookish goodies and then they also have an adult book only subscription as well which i'm happy to let you guys know that i'm now a rep for the adult fairy loot not this box i paid for this box but going forward i am going to be repping for their adult box as well as their young adult so once again a big thank you to fairy loot also from fairy loot we have a couple of special editions of books that I've already read which is why I haven't opened them yet I saved them for you guys from Illumicrate we have their regular monthly box like with fairy loot in here you will get a brand new hardback book in an exclusive edition along with a handful of bookish goodies and this was also sent to me by the team over at Illumicrate to open up for you guys so thank you very much to Illumicrate for that and if you would like to get your hands on an Illumicrate after watching this video I do have a discount code my code is becca5 and that will get you a discount on a three or six month or subscription and then as well as the regular Illumicrate we have their quarterly afterlight box which is about to become bi-monthly which is going to be interesting. This is a quarterly romance subscription where you get one romance book and also like two or three self-care items. I am thinking about doing a round of is the Afterlight subscription worth my money, similarly to how I do with the Goldsboro subscription. Just because this is becoming bi-monthly, it's becoming a little bit more of an expense. And because it's romance, I can read it a little bit quicker. So I'm thinking about doing all of the Afterlight books so far that I haven't read in one video. So let me know down in the comments if you'd like to see that. This is one that I do pay for myself as well. And then the final box that I'm going to be showing to you guys today is another one that I pay for which is the Goldsboro Science Fiction and Fantasy Fellowship, which as you guys can probably guess is a science fiction and fantasy subscription. It's monthly, it's book only, and I also have a vlog series where I make sure that I read all of the books in this subscription and not necessarily let you guys know but work out whether it is worth my money as a subscription. So I think we will start off with the Goldsboro this time because while this is normally the one that we end with everything else is from either Fairy Loot or Illumicrate so it seems more fitting to group all of those ones together. I actually cannot remember what this one is. One of the things that I really like about the Goldsboro subscription is that they do tell you ahead of time what their book of the month is going to be. So you do have plenty of time to skip the month if you would like to. They also show you the edition as well. So pretty much nothing is a surprise. Oh, this one's a sci-fi thing. I'm really excited for their December book actually, because while I'm not sure if I'll enjoy the book and because it's by an author that I haven't read from before, I really, really like the edition. But this one is, oh, it's got a really nice spread edge. It's The Immortality Thief by Taron Hunt and Goldsboro have been really stepping up with the majority of their edges recently. So we have this gorgeous galaxy on here and as usual from Goldsboro, it is a signed and numbered edition and I actually have number 232 out of 2000. So all I know about this one is that it is a sci-fi. So I will read the synopsis for you guys. It says, far off the edge of human existence beside a dying star lies a nameless ship abandoned and hidden. Lost for a millennium, why is this sentence so long? Far off the edge of human existence, beside a dying star, lies a nameless ship, abandoned and hidden, lost for a millennium. But there are secrets there, terrible secrets that would change the fate of humanity and eventually someone will come looking. Refugee, criminal and linguist Sean Wren is made an offer he knows he can't refuse. Life in prison, voluntary military service, are salvaging data in a long dead language from an abandoned ship filled with traps and monsters just days before it's destroyed in a supernova. Data connected to the Philosopher's Stone experiments into unlocking the secrets of immortality. If this book is as difficult to read as this synopsis, I can already tell you I am not going to enjoy it. I'm not done yet either. <laughs> and he's not the only one looking for the derelict ship. The ministers, mysterious undying aliens that have ruled over humanities for centuries, want the data, as does the Republic, humanity's last free government. 
and time is running out. There are full stops in the weirdest places. In the bowels of the derelict ship, surrounded by horrors and dead men, Sean slowly uncovers the truth of what happened on the ship in its final days and the terrible secret it's hiding. So plot wise, it doesn't seem too bad. It also has a ribbon bookmark, which I will not untuck because they are always a nightmare to get back in. But I do love me a sci-fi. I actually really, really like sci-fi. So it seems like it's adult, which is a good thing. So all I can really do is give it a try. I love sci-fi, but I've actually discovered that I don't read as much of it as I previously thought that I did. So I feel like it's hard for me to judge whether I'm gonna love it or not. It could very easily go either way. Next up, we have the Afterlight box. I once again feel like I should know what book this is, but if I did ever know, I have promptly forgotten. Here are the spoilers for the November box if you guys would like to pause and take a look. Oh, we have socks. So for the items, we have a pair of very cute Jolly Snowman socks. I actually really like these. I think that they're adorable. I'll show you this side where you can see the pattern a bit more clearly. We also have an advertisement kind of bookmark for Christmas Wish by Lindsay Kelk. Something in this little envelope might be stickers because it's super flat. Oh, is it a Christmas decoration? It is. Actually, I think I've got another one of these from a little crate on the tree somewhere. But this one is a super intricate snowflake with, does it have roses on? I think so. Then we also have a letter to the author on the back of this really pretty art print. So I'm guessing from this, that it is going to be a female-female romance. And I can confirm that it is. Make You Mine This Christmas by Lizzie Huxley Jones. Okay, so I was thinking about maybe, maybe, don't hold me to this, doing some sort of like Christmas romance reading blog, which I mean is super unoriginal because everybody does one of those, but I just don't read seasonally. And while I don't mind reading like spooky books outside of spooky season, I can't read Christmas books outside of Christmas. So I was thinking about that and then I realized I only have two, but now I have three. I haven't thought this through because while the lighting is fine from like your perspective, I can't really see a thing down here. But the synopsis on this one says, is the golden rule of pretending to be someone's girlfriend. Don't fall for their sister. This sounds like Kiss Her Once For Me, which is a book that I've just got from Book of the Month. Anyway, it says, after a year from hell, half is ready to blow off steam at a Christmas party. A kind stranger, a few too many drinks, and suddenly she's kissing Christopher under the mistletoe in front of his ex-girlfriend. The next day, the news is out that they're apparently a couple, madly in love and coming to Oxley to spend the festive season with Christopher's family. But Half doesn't have better holiday plans and to save her new friend from embarrassment, she agrees to pretend to be Christopher's girlfriend for Christmas. It has the makings of a hilarious anecdote they'll be telling for years until Half meets Christopher's sister, the mysterious, magnetic, and utterly irresistible Kit. Maybe love was waiting for Half in this quiet little town all along. So cute, fake dating, Christmassy. I don't know how I feel about Christmas romances because I've literally never read one before in my life. So maybe I will do that vlog. Once again, let me know if that's content you want to see. Next up, we have the regular monthly Luma Crate. Oh, the book in this one is The Luminaries by Susan Dennard, which is also published by Luma Crate's um, publishing house, printing press, Daphne Press is what it's called anyway. But the theme is some kind of monster and the theme for December is Better Together, which is for fans of The Song of Achilles, The Jasmine Throne, and Crescent City. Okay, I'm hyped. This is the spoilers for the box if any of you guys would like to pause and take a look. But as usual, I'm gonna be going in blind. So getting rid of the packing chips on top, we do have one of the Tetons, which I actually do make use of because I actually do drink loose leaf tea. I'm trying to see if I can guess the inspiration of this one. It's There's a Mermaid on it which is throwing me. Oh, is it um, Only a Monster by Vanessa Lynn? In which case I would have no idea what it is because I haven't read that book yet. But as usual, it has a design on the lid as well. Is this, what is this? It looks like it could be a blanket, but it also looks really, really small. Oh, it's a scarf. Oh my God, this is gorgeous. I love this. I kind of wish it wasn't white and green, but that's just like a personal preference thing in like what I actually wear, which is very much not white and green. But it is inspired by the Bear and the Nightingale, the Winter Night series by Catherine Arden, which is one of my favorite series. We then have another fabric item, which is 
a tote bag. Oh, it's inspired by the Scholomance by Naomi Novik, which is a series that we all know I both love and hate in equal measure. As always, I always say when I get tote bags and subscription boxes, they're kind of a little bit of a tired item for me because I have so many of them from subscription boxes, but at the same time, they do come in handy. Here, I think we have a replica, one of Illumicrate's, oh, it's a sword one. Oh, it has glitter in it. And this one is a replica of a sword from Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. And then I think we just have one more item before we get to the book, which is, oh, it's another one of Illumicrate's paper craft kits. This one is inspired by Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. I'm not going to take this one out of the packet because I learned from doing the last one that it doesn't end well, but um, it's a picture of Alex Stern that will end up looking a bit like this. And the book of the month, which we know is gonna be Luminaries. Oh, super pretty. I think it goes, does it go this way? I don't know, it's like double foiled and I can't tell what the right way is. Oh, oh, she pretty. Oh, the back as well. This is gorgeous. I'm worried now because this is stunning. But I don't like Truth Witch. So I don't know how I'm gonna feel about the luminaries. The bag says the forest is dangerous for a luminary untrained. Oh my God, look at that. Oh my God, look at that. Also, end pages. And as usual, with the Lunar Crate, it is also signed. One of the benefits of having Daphne Press is that um, they can make more customizations to their books, which is how this ended up so stunning. So I'm excited to see what comes in the future from Illumicrate and Daphne Press kind of like working in tandem like this. <sighs> I just don't like Truth Witch. I've actually just, I liked the first book and then with each book, the series just got worse and worse to the point where I've just unhauled all of them and I bought them all in hardback. So I am a little bit nervous about this. I, I don't know what it's about either. <laughs> so I am gonna read out the dust jacket to you. It says, Hemlock, there is a typo on the first the first word of the synopsis is a typo. Like, I don't know if you guys can see, like here, there's no E in hemlock and it does say hemlock a little bit further down here. So it's not like an intentional, um, like quirky spelling for the sake of the book. Well, the synopsis says, hemlock falls isn't like other towns. You won't find it on a map. Your phone won't work here and the forest outside town might just kill you. Winnie Wednesday wants nothing more than to join the luminaries, the ancient order that protects Winnie's town and the rest of humanity from the monsters and nightmares that rise in the forest of hemlock falls every night. Ever since her father was exposed as a witch and a traitor, Winnie and her family have been shunned. But on her 16th birthday, she can take the deadly luminary hunter trials and prove herself true and loyal and restore her family's good name or die trying. But in order to survive, Winnie must enlist the help of the one person who can train her, Jay Friday, these names. Resident bad boy and Winnie's ex-best friend. While Jay might be the most promising new hunter in Hemlock Falls, he also seems to know more about the nightmares of the forest than he should. Together, he and Winnie will discover a danger lurking in the forest no one in Hemlock Falls is prepared for. Not all monsters can be slain and not all nightmares are confined to the dark. So Susan Dallard aside, really really beautiful edition let me know down in the comments as usual what your favorite item from this month's box is i think mine is gonna have to be the scarf okay so now we are sliding over into fairy loot territory and we will start off with the special editions i think these are wave kings i now cannot remember if i ordered them i think i decided i didn't want them and then changed my mind and ended up ordering them anyway they have an absolutely beautiful gill edge on them. This one is part one and this one is part two. Also comes with just a little like fairy loop thank you card. The only thing that's actually all that special about these as far as I can remember is the gill edge. But I was gonna buy the normal editions of these anyway because these have been printed as like a special edition in the last like six months. But I thought that I may as well just get the fairy loop ones if I was gonna have them anyway. Next up from fairy loop we have the adult book which is the one that I've been spoiled for hundreds of times. It is Diary of Blood by S.T. Gibson. This one is a book only subscription as well. So I do just have the book. One of the reasons why I was so desperate to do this unboxing today is because I've been selling some of my books on my website and I needed the boxes. <laughs> Didn't have any boxes that I could fit books into. So I was desperate to do this unboxing so that I could reuse all of the boxes. But yeah, there we go. Diary of Blood. I know that this is an exclusive cover. I think that the 
traditionally published one because it started off as an indie book but I think the trad pub is completely black so I'll overlay the original over the top but we have ooh. oh oh pretty end pages printed hardcover as well she's a stunner what's the other end page there we go as far as I'm aware the plot of this book is about Dracula's brides but it's sapphic. So the brides are like, two of the brides are in love with each other. We also do have this really nice printed edge that goes all the way around. And I will just check the synopsis. Yeah, so it is about Constanta who is transformed from a medieval peasant into a bride fit for an undying king. And then she finds out that Dracula is actually capable of terrible things and finds comfort in the arms of her rival consorts while unraveling their husband's dark secret. So this is actually one that I, I wasn't bothered about. I will read it now that I have an edition and there is definitely potential for me to like it. It's just from other people talking about it and reading it. It wasn't one that I was going to like rush out and buy for myself, but it is one that I have heard good things about. It being the adult fairy loot book at least gives me the opportunity to read it and actually find out if um, I do indeed enjoy it. Then the final box is the Young Adult Fairy Loot for November which has just arrived today and I'm excited to see what we've got. Oh do we have a mug? This was very cleverly packed because this mug doesn't have a box but like look how it's been nestled in there so it doesn't break. That is genius. So this one oh oh Oh, does this have foiling on it? Oh, that's gorgeous. I don't even know where the, let's get rid of this. I need to calm down. I need to find the spoiler card first, which I think should be right down at the bottom. Oh, I remember this theme. It was a theme that I was excited for in terms of items, everything. And I've just seen a whole ton of stuff and it's beautiful. But the theme is the witching hour and here, are the spoilers. So the mug is Kingdom of the Wicked by Perry Maniscalco, which I thought it might be, but I was sure that they already did a Kingdom of the Wicked one. Regardless though, they've never done a foiled mug that before, as far as I'm aware, which is gorgeous. And I'll add it to my vast collection of, oh, is that foiled? No. It's just the reflection, isn't it? That's not foiled, that's just black. But I will add it to my vast collection of subscription box mugs. I'm, I'm interested to see, I'm not gonna use it is the thing actually. I'm worried about breaking them so I don't use them because if I break them, I can't replace them. But based on how this feels, I would be interested to see how the foiling like holds up to actually being washed. So everything's kind of at the bottom and we have a whole bunch of like, kind of flat items in this month's box. So I'll just scoop them all out and leave the book behind. So first off, this is super, super pretty. Is it a reading journal? Oh, it is. That's beautiful. It's like a review journal with a page per book. So it doesn't have like TBR and hold pages and things in here, but it has a gorgeous moon and bee design on it and it's a real like it feels real good as well we also have what feels like one of the like sword replica letter openers oh this one does say that it's a letter opener and it's inspired by serpent and dove but i don't actually feel like this would be good for actually opening letters because the edge like it doesn't have a, a flat edge for you to just break the paper with. We also have what feels like it could be a pin, which is, oh, it's a grimoire. I like the design on this one. It's super simple, black and gold, and also pretty fandom neutral. And then the last thing we have before we get to the book of the month are the tarot cards. These are bonus items in every box. And then eventually if you have enough fairy loot, you'll end up with a full deck of tarot. But the November ones are the tower and the star, who I believe are characters from the Stardust Thief by Chelsea Abdullah. Moving on to the book of the month. Very excited because I think it is, out of all of the boxes we've done today, I think this is the only one that as far as I'm aware, I've had no idea what the book is. And it has a very nice orange sprayed edge. But before we get to that, we have the monthly fairy scoop. The December box is called Come One, Come All. It's for fans of Caraval and the Night Circus. It also has the next mythology foil bookmarks in it and also a fandom neutral bookends and a book sleeve. So the December box sounds like it's gonna be pretty cool. And we also have the monthly bookmark that matches the spoiler card art. There is also, as always, a letter from the author on the back of this art card. And the book of the month. Oh, I've just seen a glimpse of the cover and I feel like I have an inkling. I can't remember. The Ones We Burn by Rebecca Mitt. Oh! Oh, okay. 
Oh, this is pretty. I will overlay the original cover over the top so that you guys can see the difference. Oh, oh, this is braid edges ombre. Oh, I really like the addition. Oh, look at those end. This is a gorgeous addition. We have stunning end pages. I've just knocked the book plate out of my hands, but they are also different on both sides. Oh my God, it's not the foiling and an alternate cover if you want to flip it inside out this is some some good customization i am a big fan instead of the book being signed this time we do have a book plate which is fine i'm not one for signatures anyway i don't care all that much and this one i heard conflicting things about the content of this and i'm not going to get into oh there goes all my books i'm not going to get into the specifics of the controversy because quite honestly i don't know all that much but i do know that there have been people saying that this is problematic and then other people saying if you actually read the book then it's not so i don't know either way because i haven't read it and i haven't looked into it too much but i do know that people have been going back and forth on it a lot but the synopsis of this says ranka is tired of death now she just wants to be left alone living out her days in the wild north with the coven that raised her attempting to forget the horrors of her past but when she is named bloodwind the next treaty bride to the human kingdom of isadel her coven sends her south with a single directive kill the prince easy enough for a blood witch whose magic compels her to kill except the prince is gentle kind I'm terrified of her. He doesn't want to marry Ranka. He doesn't want to be king at all. And it's his sister, the wickedly smart, infuriatingly beautiful princess Aramis, who seems to be the real threat. But when witches start turning up dead, murdered by a magical plague, Aramis makes Ranka an offer. Help her develop a cure, and in return, she'll teach Ranka to contain her deadly magic. As the coup draws nearer and the plague spread, Ranka is forced to question everything she thought she knew about her power, her past, and who she is meant to fight for. Soon she will have to decide between the coven that raised her and the princess who sees beyond the monster they shaped her to be. But as the bodies pile up, a monster may be exactly what they need. Yeah, so I synopsis wise it sounds like a very typical YA fantasy we have a handsome prince we have a female protagonist we have a problem that needs solving uh, it sounds all right I can't say that the synopsis stands out to me but it sounds like something that I will only know if I like it if I actually read it because the synopsis is so like anything else that I've ever read from the YA fantasy genre stunning addition though love the customization options on this this isn't anything too amazing in itself but the fact that you have the option of that reverse dust jacket um plus everything else i'm a fan of the addition so favorite item from this month's box it is a difficult one for me this month because i do think that this is absolutely stunning if we're talking about what i think is just generally the best item this one i don't really use book journals i have a commitment issue when it comes to using pretty stationery and i also have a spreadsheet and a digital planner um which kind of gets around that commitment issue i have with putting pen to paper while i can get really into things like this when i decide to use them sometimes i'll give up and then feel really guilty about it so I don't think it's something that I'm necessarily going to use but I do think that it is probably the best item in here and I do like it it's just I for my own reasons I'm not really going to use it you know so here we have this is quite heavy actually this month we have seven brand new very pretty very fancy books I think out of all of the editions I gotta give the luminaries like the prettiest edition award of november because it is absolutely stunning but yes quite a bit that i'm excited to read in here so i guess let me know what your favorite edition or like book from the stack is as well down in the comments but thank you to illumicrate and fairy loop for providing boxes that i opened today in this video down in my description box you will find a link to all of the websites for the boxes that i've shown today as well as all of their social media and any discount codes that i have but aside from that guys please don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you wanna. If you head to my description box, you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those, as well as a link to my bookish candle website, the Etsy for that, and the 10% off discount code. It is also shutting tomorrow for Christmas as well if you're watching this on the day that it's posted. So do get any last minute orders in there if you would like to. But that's it from me today, guys. Bye. Oh, you bite your friend like chocolate. You say you Go where nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no, we're never gonna quit it, no